Well, my name is Devin. Uh, I'm like a, I'm a software producer. I deliver solutions for startups. I work in green energy a bit. Um, I do some nonprofit stuff. Um, I've been a contractor for Beta NYC in the past. Born and raised in New York, a proper proper civic patriot, I would say. Um, let's move on. Okay. So you know, as many of you are probably familiar with, uh, you know, New York City, one of the great cities in the world, maybe the best city, um, but also the richest city in the richest country. Uh, and so, unfortunately, we're not the best at everything, and we should be. Uh, in general, statistically, we pay more and get less when it comes to health, education, and infrastructure than comparable cities around the world and even on the eastern seaboard. Um, so, to billions of people around the world, you know, our city represents the melting pot. We're valorized in Hollywood, um, you know, as a as a place for immigration and opportunity to thrive. If we want if we have those ideals, we need to make it look great, make it work great. Um, so, we've got to, in my opinion, we've got to make the city the best not just for us, but for everybody who believes in urbanism. Um, and so what does better look like, particularly when it comes to technology? I've been unfortunately a little disappointed that OTI hasn't spun up a digital services group that like many formatted under, or similarly to ATF, which is a federal group or the government digital service in the UK or really dozens or hundreds of other digital service organizations that utilize open source software and development practices to deliver significantly better government software to the government and to the public um, cheaper, faster, and better than ever before. We've really got to shift to a digital service model. Um, Moda, however, an absolute bright spot in the New York technology landscape, delivering what I think is, if not the, the biggest open government data set for a municipality in the world, tier one. I don't know. I've never seen a bigger open government data set. Just absolutely fantastic work happening there. Um, so what do we do at WeGov? WeGov is a volunteer-run nonprofit project that supports open source software and data projects that hopefully show city government and the public better ways to use technology to improve how New York City functions. Um, we're interested in projects that uh, make New York City more open, effective, and participatory. Um, if you have such projects and are looking to kind of connect, you can get a little bit of support. We do that type of thing. You should contact me. Um, our flagship, flagship project, however, is the data book. Um, and so the data book is, if I may be humble, I think the kind of the future of the, the next step beyond open putting open data into a data repository, um, which is something that we do great in New York City and where I think the open data movement is generally globally. Um, but after that, what we need are is what I think data book provides, which is a data pipeline that normalizes uh, data sets that are in the open government, open the, the data repository. Um, so we need, we need normalization tools. We need another repository or an additional layer of data that is, uh, that's made available to the public that is this normalized data, um, which we offer at our API. Um, and we need interface applications that weave these data sets together, which you can do once you have normalized data sets, uh, so that we have compelling products and services that enable people to get insights, learn more about the city, take action when appropriate, et cetera. Um, so the reason why we need this normalized data is because um, while New York City is doing a great job publishing lots and lots of data, 3,000, 4,000, maybe 5,000 data sets at this point, those data sets are not normalized. And yes, I will clarify what normalized means right now. What that means is that data sets are going in. Let's say you have a data set about mm, capital projects. Um, you know, you have multiple data sets about capital projects, all of those capital projects, um, all those data sets have some reference to the managing agency. So that could be Disney, that could, that could be the Department of Sanitation, that could be DEPT dot sanitation. There are many different ways that the, uh, an agency's name sits in a data set. And if that, if that name is not exactly the same between data sets, you cannot join, um, you cannot create a join um, which enables you to move through those data sets, recognize that the agency recognize that the agency is the same, and build applications that that have information about multiple data sets uh, easily. So to do that, to build applications with multiple data sets, referring to specific uh, agencies or even specific community districts or um, specific project IDs, you have to normalize that data. Um, and so 
right? It's basically turning apples into apples instead of apples to oranges. Um, and so we do this, we establish a, a UID index that is kind of the definitive um, reference point for our normalized data. And then we built a data pipeline to normalize these data sets. And what that, what that ultimately means is that we're taking NYC open data, we are adding columns to it, not changing any of the data that exists, but adding columns, additional columns to it that have code that have normalized data attached to it so that people can build more intense and interesting applications around it. Um, and so the features of our data pipeline, which are you know kind of the things that we wanted it to do, is we wanted it to update automatically. So whenever a data set, um, whenever a data set is uploaded to the data portal, uh, or a new data, a new version of a data set is uploaded to the data portal, it automatically runs the transformer. It automatically runs this normalization. Um, we want it to be really fast um, to set up so that it makes it easy. We don't have to do much software development to uh, we don't have to do any software development to normalize another data set. We have a uh, interface, a spreadsheet interface that we use, a Google Sheet interface that we use to do that. Um, we output that data into S3 buckets, Amazon S3 buckets, but we also upload it into an API where people can access it. Um, and we wanted to build this all in a way where we could quickly build apps around it, which we have a process for doing. Um, and we're doing all this kind of, it's like, why do all this? I mean, A, analytics and stuff are good, but B, you know, I grew up and I know a lot of people I know grew up with SimCity um, and I expected fantastic urban interfaces, interfaces for understanding my city, whether it's uh, budgets or what decisions uh, key personnel and stakeholders are making, data maps, all this stuff. I expected all this stuff when I was 11. I'm trying to, trying to if, if it doesn't exist for me, I want it to exist. So tr through this data pipeline, through this normalization, I think we can get to a significantly better interface for understanding how the city works and enabling citizens to give feedback about the city, um, which is essential for delivering, you know, the greatest city in the world. Um, so here's a view of the pipeline. Just again, the way we do it is we, um, we basically have an Airtable data repository where we index all the data sets that we think are interesting. Right now we've got over 30 uh, data sets from the open data portal that we think are interesting um, and useful for our kind of datable concept. We transform them, upload them into S3, as well as into our SQL database, which powers our API and then build uh, an app on top of that API. Uh, I'm not gonna go, but yeah, we search and evaluate. I'm constantly looking at the recently updated data sets uh, on open data to see if they fit with things that we're working on. Um, so always fun to do. We do that indexing. Um, we normalize and match. So we have this custom application that is, that is the interface for our data pipeline where we match um, items to, uh, you know, we, 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 we do that matching um, and then we output a normalized data set and then do really, you know, what I hope are simple interfaces for, um, for the public using the federal design standards, which are good enough and particularly good because then you don't have to sit around trying to make decisions about design as, as much. It's more about where to put the components. Um, so we actually have um, a ton of data, 30 data sets. I'm just, just going to go through kind of what we have. We have we have 30 we have 30 data set joins on organizations so you can go through and you can see agency profiles you can see all of their city record online entries the people who their civic their civil list which is all the people who work there indicators from the mayor's management report services and benefits from the uh, services api that is good and should be used for my city um hopefully someone adams realizes that the job boards facilities blah 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 30 data sets um, we also have sections on notices that focus on making a better interface for the city record items um, on districts. We've got maps and stuff. We've got a whole section about civil service titles, which is really interesting, showing how many people work where, getting paid what um, within the city, what their official titles are, what the descriptions of those official titles are. Figuring out when the tests are for those civil service exams, much trickier, requires some real real uh real research um and we even have a uh we even scan city auctions put that all together on databook.nyc it's a fun time if folks want to take a look at it but um 
what I'm going to get into is just capital project data because um, a, a number of new data, we've had a capital project explorer since I think 2019 um, that was at best in the city in terms of public information about capital projects being collated together. A new set of capital of data or new sets of data have come out since then. So we did a big update. Um, but first I want to contextualize the challenges around capital budgets in New York City. Um, right, These are the budgets that fund construction and repair for our infrastructure, land acquisition, building purchases, building maintenance, equipment that's, ex that's more than what, $35,000, I think, um, that's gonna last more than five years. Um, so, right, our public schools, our hospitals, our bridges, roads, sewers, all this stuff is powered by our capital budget. And I'll be polite, trying to be polite and say it's, it's grossly mismanaged. I mean, it's a difficult process, don't get me wrong, but you know, we're 50% over budget. Um, and nearly 70% of projects are running late. People know this. This is not this is not news. The Adams administration has proposed a bunch of changes. I hope they work. I hope that, I hope they radically improve the situation. Um, so just to total things out here, we're $52 billion in a 10-year budget. We're, we're $52 billion over budget. And just to compare that, the entire Philadelphia five-year capital budget is $9.5 billion. So the amount that our budget, our capital budget is over budget is over 20 years of Philadelphia's entire capital budget. So we're talking over 5,000 projects with an original cost of $88 billion, you know, now looking at a current cost of $141 billion. So if sunlight's the great disinfectant, we need a lot of it. And so we hopefully are using software to do that well. Just currently, if you want to learn more about the capital budget, um, there are a bunch of key documents. There's a 10-year strategy that's up on a Squarespace website that is a uh, websiteized version of a 140-page PDF. That's the 10-year capital strategy. Um, talk a bit more about that, but basically that's updated every two years, uh, and it shows what the mayor's priorities are. That It breaks things down into project types, which are basically agency delineated mostly and um, tenure categories, which is a interesting facet of data that we use to build interface around, which we will get into shortly. Um, then we have uh, the adopted capital budget I'll, I'll go to in terms of making, cycling this a little bit. You've got the two year, every two years, the tenure strategy gets updated. The adopted capital budget happens every year between the mayor and the city council. I'm sure I might be summarizing this a little wrong. If so, folks can feel free to put it into the chat. Um, but that's what the city council agrees on. And this comes out with a bunch of budget lines, which, which with dollar amounts next attached to them. And this is what then is kind of the amount that projects can get funded with. Then every, what, every three, every four months, three times a year, they update the capital commitment plan, which basically commits money to specific projects. And then we get the capital projects uh, detailed data that OMB uploads, which is 7,000 pages of PDF in, in, in six volumes, um, which has kind of information about individual specific capital projects, such as street reconstructions and whatnot. Online tools available for this. Um, there's the City Planning Capital Planning Explorer, which recently got significantly improved in so far as it now has geographic data attached to it, which is really nice. Um, that made our lives easier before we were getting DOT data and blah, 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 doing a lot of joins that were cool, but um, much nicer to have the city present this data really effectively. So it's got some basic information as well. It's got commitments and it's got some basic information about the projects, which is nice. And then we've got the capital project dashboard, which is a little bit of information um, about the project and like a project history table, which is an abridged version of what the city makes available in PDF. Um, so our version is hopefully much more exhaustive. Um, hopefully you'll think that. So we, we have the maps and points. We have points and polygons. So we have the mapping data um, for uh, the project. Um, we have project change summaries with the ability to switch between published information, publishing date, um, so that you can see how that project record has changed over time. You can see on the, the right-hand side, we have a change log which we should do more with in terms of data, uh, in terms of visualization, but it really shows you how projects develop over time, not just the latest version of what the city says is happening with a project. Um, we have milestones that come from that detailed data report. We have uh, recent spending We've from also these reports, commitments over time. There are a few different styles of commitment data. We have both of those. 
Um, we also give people the ability to comment on projects. Uh, and all of these things click. So if you click on project types or you click on the 10-year capital plan, capital plan category, you'll go to other pages. And we're going to go through all this in actual live. Uh, but, you know, we'll go through the app. Um, we do this by combining 11 capital program data sets, um, a few from DOT for geography information, but mostly OMB data and city plan city planning data. OMB working with city planning to kind of mesh that data all together uh, nicely would make this entire project not necessary, which we're always for. Um, I'll, as much as I love building these things, it's not. It would be more appropriate for the city to do it for us. Um, so when you're mixing all of this data together, uh, you know you got to figure out how to do it. Um, here's a little diagram. The key, the key kind of join elements are uh, that we use are project IDs. Um, so these are published by the city. Budget lines also published by the city, um, and project types. Um, which are published as well, of course, by the city, but are uh, associated with the, particularly the, uh, the strategic documents, the 10-year capital plan. Um, all of these are not normalized out of the city's data. So we had to normalize by project ID, by budget line, and by project type. What does that mean? It means that sometimes project IDs have spaces in them. Sometimes they have dashes. Um, there's also a whole other data that sometimes they have agency codes appended to them um, at the top, at the front or back. Um, same thing with budget lines in terms of sometimes there's spaces and dashes. So if you just throw this stuff all in a database, right, you got to go through this normalization pipeline first. And even same thing with project types, um, remarkably. So we connected all this stuff up. We think there's more to do. We would definitely, I'm definitely interested in integrating uh, school construction authority data. School construction authority is its own separate entity that manages everything involving capital infrastructure for schools. Um, they out upload their data in a different way. And when I looked at it last, which was a few years ago, uh, less, less information than I would like to see. Um, and Park has their own data sets as well. There's also uh, the Comptroller's Checkbook NYC data, uh, which would be really nice to integrate into this because that shows every check that gets written by the city, the amount and to whom that check goes to. Absolutely massive, fantastic amount of information there if we wanted to track uh, projects in real time in terms of their spending and who's working on them and whatnot. Unfortunately, that data set does not come with project IDs nor budget lines that I've seen. Um, and so it, it would take a bunch of work to work through the contract ID through stuff. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking about it. If anyone has any ideas for how to do that, I am here for it. It would. There's a few things I would rather do um, with my time than figure out how to connect contracts to projects and make all of this stuff flow through. Um, okay, I get into some other stuff, blah, blah, blah. I think, how about we go, we go for a little tour? Well, for, before we go through a tour, or I'll set up the tour, but I'd love any questions, comments, anything in the chat would be really fun. Um, I always like to deliver um, some commentary via people asking me questions. I prefer this is more of like a conversation. Um, but okay, hopefully now you see, uh, so just throw throw things in the chat as they come to you. Um, if they're not on topic, I, I won't really reply to them or I'll, you know, I'll address what, what seems most useful and fun. But okay, shall we, uh, We'll look at the app. Um, so right now we're featuring the Capital Project Explorer because it's it's the most fun. There's a lot of other cool stuff in here. Um, but before, let me, I'm just going to kind of go through from the Capital pro Program slide into projects. Projects are, are fun and we built our first tool around projects, but now we've got a little bit more. Um, so when it comes to the, so as I was describing before, it's useful to think of the capital process in stages um, around there, like how often they get updated. So we've got a strategy document that um, the city produces every two years, a budget that's every year, and then commitments that are every three months. Would love to add checks at the end of this um, for how you know projects get funded in in real time. Um, but let's let's 
we'll go through there in, recently in the news. Uh, they were talking about the flat iron thing. That's why flat iron reconstruction. Um, hopefully, it's the same one, but that's that's why I was bringing up flat iron. So here's the interface. Um, we've got all the capital projects here. Uh, if you do this type of work, you have to also recenter the uh, map around New York because a lot of people don't realize how much. Let me see if we got some pins up here. But you know, New York, there are capital projects that exist outside in our watershed that are always interesting. Um, but anyway, so here's uh, our capital projects. I would love feedback about how to improve this thing, particularly uh, in an email to me, but I'll even take in chat. I know we got to do something better with the colors, but you can see we've got streets here and we've got points um, and we have polygons for large sections. But let's look at the flat iron plaza reconstruction which is probably related to what something the mayor just announced, which um, you know is that they're going to pedestrianize more of Broadway. Um, and so, if we look at this, let's see what we got here. Okay, so we've got our our map, so we can see what we're talking about when it comes to uh, the Flatiron Plaza reconstruction. We can see that it originally started uh, as a two hundred thousand dollar project that is now a ten point three million dollar project. Fund and it originally started in 2013. That's now supposed to end in 2025. Now we can use, we can actually go through till 2019 and see what earlier kind of commentary we had. So in 2019, when we were first releasing this type of data, um, you know, this is originally a $200,000 project that was only looking as well. That was looking as 9.73 million. So that was 4,700% over budget. Um, but it was looking like it was on time. Um, and, and yeah, it was looking like it was going to be on time. Fast forward to now, and um, it's still on time. So cool. But uh, right now we're looking at, oh, I even went to 2023. I shouldn't have done that. Okay, let's do 2022. 2022, we're at 10 million. 2023, we've expanded the project. Clearly, we've, the project is delayed due to budgetary restraint constraints now. Um, probably the scope expanded as well, if I had to guess. But now we're at a... $73 million project that's 36,000% 36, over budget and going to 2028. I would love to know what the difference was between um, the 2022 version where this thing was 10 million and ending in April and now it's still ending at the same time but now got $60 million more. Um, we can't, well, we can, if we go back to, well, we, we, could, we could play around with that, we can also just look at the change log here. Um, so we can see that uh, some of the some of the stuff in the first data versions, things get a little chaotic. Yeah, we need to improve our, our change log here. But let's let's just say that um, let's go to the most recent data. Let's see where we're at. All right. So originally, so this thing hasn't even officially started insofar as the city is concerned. Um, I guess the scope just keeps increasing, right? This was, we were supposed to originally develop the scope in 2013, but now it's 2025. So this thing has just gotten punted and just grown and grown and grown in terms of how much money there is. So let's, let's look now at, um, and I have to say, I actually haven't, aside from taking a screenshot from the flat iron thing for the presentation, I actually haven't looked at any of this data in any, this is the most I've seen of the flat iron data. Uh, so we're, we're, we're learning about this together. Okay, so looks like the total plan commitment, mm, right, is $10 million. This is the 10 million version. No, yeah, is $10 million. Um, and this would be the OMB data, I believe. Um, and then, right, we've, so we've got, so we've definitely got a commitment of 10 million bucks uh, that's been implemented or is about to be implemented. Um, so in, in January, or I mean, in, in June, so that's interesting. Um, I guess the rest of this is coming in increments. I don't know. Honestly, I need people from OMB. I need people to, from the city to explain it. One of the reasons why I do this is because I'm completely confused. Um, and I would love to walk for someone to walk through with me how and why projects like this are, you know, $73 million when they were like, what, what happened here? I think there's, I think there's a good story to it. Um, so to kind of 
learn more about the story, let's click on some stuff. Uh, so yeah, someone's saying that maybe the 71 million is the sum of these numbers. It's it's certainly possible. It's certainly possible. And maybe, maybe the best, maybe the most accurate. The thing about the commitment numbers is that because the data comes in different um, in different cycles um, based on data source, sometimes the, the second to latest publication date is the is the best one. Um, so let's let's assume this is a $10 million. This is actually just a $10 million project. That's only 5,000% um, over budget. And we can go from there. Um, I think that's a astute, astute point. So let's let's start clicking on links to, to learn more about what we've got going on here. Um, should we go to let's let's first talk, let's go kind of from the top down. So, so Department of Transportation Highways um, is, uh, someone says ask OMB in the open data week session. Let's ask OMB, oh, it's Kate. Hey, Kate, let's ask OMB. We've got a lot to, we've got 5,000 projects, $50 billion over budget. So there, there's a lot to ask about. Um, but yeah, we could, we could, we could go, go deep on the flat iron reconstruction here. But okay, if we look at uh, the Department of Transportation's highway, highways, uh, project type. So this is one of the, there's only about 30 project types. Let's go to project type. Do, do, do. All right, so we've got how many project types? We've got 37 project types. Um, and, you know, we sum them all up here in terms of the associated strategic categories, their budget lines, their commitments, and associated projects, which is actually fantastic that project types now exist in the data set because it allows us to do these rollups. Um, and so you can see we got a ton of project type data in here. You know, we can tell you things like City University apparently has a $738 million uh, in the 10 year prediction uh, from the from the, the strategy strategic document. It's got $178 billion in commitments. Um, you know, the next value, like the one year value of that, so like next year. So pretty sure we've got um, $107 million committed this year. Um, and, you know, they've got uh, an original budget right now of $600, $600 million um, with actually a, a, a smaller current budget, which is uh, not always the case. Um, fine enough. Let's go back to the uh, let's go back to the projects here. Okay, so let's go back to project types. Um, so the project type when it comes to highways is let's and let's go to 2021 data. As you can see, the project data we've got yeah. So in this situation, we don't have plan. We got to go back. We got to go back to the 2021 data to get get our calculations here. So we've got facility reconstruction. You know, this is basically what the Department of Transportation Highways is looking like for uh, for both their tenure um, and their more and their and their existing capital project breakdowns. You know, I don't know what to do with this except tell you it's a lot of money, particularly for sidewalk reconstruction, which is something that I'm passionate about. Um, we've also got budget lines that are associated with these. Um, and this is where you can see how much is actually in the budget for each of these items and over time. So we can show you different versions um, of the how, how this has evolved. So it looks like um, so we've got the amount of budget lines. So they're consolidating budget lines. It looks like with a pretty steady um, total budget of approaching uh, $5 billion a year. Um, kind of interesting. I'm certainly interested in these consolidations, but maybe also uh, you know, maybe well, it does. It does. The, these numbers do change pretty significantly. So maybe it's a management style. And we also we can join uh, budget lines with commitments. We do that here. You know, I'm I can't stress enough how much I am not an expert about any of this. What I am an expert on apparently is making large information systems with lots of different data sets. I do that professionally um, as well, and I'm really just kind of expressing my desire for the city to do that by by putting this thing together here through our little nonprofit structure. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in highways, here's highway information. Um, if you're interested in local street reconstruction, which is a which is what this flat iron plaza reconstruction is, 
uh, we can learn more, and, and which is a 10 year plan category, we can look at that as well. So street reconstruction, we've got this, we can connect, we can connect plan categories to specific projects um, because categories, categories feed up to project types. Um, I could, yeah. And so we can see we've only got a few true street reconstruction projects um, because I think these things get wrapped into other wrapped into other categories. Um, that is what it is. Uh, and let's see what we've got here. Budget lines. So we've got three budget lines. And in fact, when we look at maybe maybe what happened recently, maybe we got an additional budget line in 2023. No, it's probably just a commitment. Yeah, you can see how these budget line numbers change depending on um, depending on what version you're looking at. Um, so these budget lines are getting a lot of these these calculations pull up from budget lines. These public budget lines get updated. Um, like their identifiers get updated, and so we we get new new results. We can go. Let's look at a budget line. Um, okay, construction of street small square triangle plan NYC. This looks like a fun one. Um, so budget comes from different sources. So we show the sources here. There's in in OMB's data and OMB's commitment data. They show this as uh, city or non-city. In I guess this would be the budget data set. You can also see whatever data sets we're pulling from in this table down here. So uh, yeah, the commitment plan, the capital budget, um, and so we've got federal funding. So we can see ten million dollars in federal funding was allocated to this type of thing um, for 2024, and the city's got city exempt budget is uh, 188 million um, exempt versus non-exempt. Not something I'm an expert on, but uh, that exemption and non-exemption is related to bonds, is my understanding. Uh, and you can see uh, funding sources on the chart. You can see all the commitments related to this budget line and all the projects pulling from this budget line. Um, and you can see before, I guess, when we were on the street reconstruction category, we only had three projects. Um, but if you look at the projects here, which is the construction of street small square triangles, you can see we've got uh, many more uh we have many more um so we've got 19 projects with 343 million this this sounds more right and a lot of these are uh some of these are broad um but let's look i'm curious about that baruch college one because i certainly know this one um you know I, I i eat around here i've enjoyed this this plaza um that apparently was originally supposed to cost $4.1 million. Now it's costing $16 million. Um, the project's delayed due to unforeseen site field conditions. A lot of these projects, I mean, that project specifically seems pretty uh, seems pretty done to me. You can see we don't have different uh, numbers coming from there. Um, but apparently there's still some construction that needs to be completed. Uh, and there's some construction that needs to be completed. I don't know, 2027. I don't know what's going on there. I mean, maybe there is, maybe this is a data error. Maybe this is the elongation of this because they want to put more work in under this budget line. I don't really know, um, but I would love to find out uh, because, right. So, but the bottom line is we're looking at, you know, a 4 million to 6. $16 million difference. If we roll back time, let's see, when did this thing really blow out? Okay, so it was when we first saw data about this, and it was originally supposed to end in 2022, it was at 9 million, and it goes to 11 million 2022. And then things start getting a little weird um, around between 2022, May and 2022, October. Um, so just another just another one of the many many items in here um i really think I, the next thing we're going to work on you know and this is this is let me just say this is no one's paying us to do this this is just uh money blood sweat and tears um so would love feedback would love like design advice would love questions because that helps us build a better thing for our users definitely need to improve this change log so that we can see kind of how these projects develop i think that's that's one of the most interesting bits that comes out of this. 
Final thing I'll go to before maybe we get some quick Q&A uh, is community districts served. Um, so this is a fun one. Well, I, and we can also then go look at, to zoom out, we can look at projects. Uh, we can look at agencies, sorry. But like if we look at a community district served, um, let's see, this should work. So we also have this whole other section for districts. Um, and we have district types, put all this stuff together. I don't know how this would get served by that Peru thing. Let's see, 301. Mm, I think we have a normalization error. Sometimes these uh, sometimes these district IDs are not what they look like, but I can tell you that the Baruch is here. So let's, okay, 106. Yeah, so that was 306, probably a data pipeline data pipeline issue. Um, in this district, I can sh you can see city council discretionary spending. You can see the latest. Let's see it based on 2021. All right, so this is this is the discretionary spending from city council, 154 records um, in 2021. Uh, interesting. We can see all the nonprofits and whatnot getting getting all of this discretionary money. This is an area where we're gonna we're gonna work on stuff. Um, we also have for some community boards that publish it. I guess Manhattan Community Board six doesn't, or our data pipeline broke. We have requests from the community board that represents that area. That's always fun. Um, we have facility information from city planning's uh, facility map. So here are all the facilities that uh, are the capital capital project map, capital capital facility map, whatever it is. Here are all the city funded facilities in that district. Uh, we've got more data about that here. Um, you know, there's just so much data. Um, and I think it's really cool. I'm trying to figure out who wants to use it, but ultimately we've got um, the project data. So we've got projects, we've got 64 projects in this community district. Here's their TLDRs. Um, you, know, you can click on any of these and go back to what was, uh, you know, the, the project profiles that you saw before. You can see roll-ups here, you can see roll-ups here. We can go and look at different versions of this um, from previously in time. Um, we can click here to view census data uh, about this district from the Population Fact Finder, which is a fantastic tool that everyone should love um, from city planning. And I hope they, they update the data and keep it going. Um, we can also, community districts are cool, but like also, City council districts are cool. So let's see. Hopefully this thing will we're gonna we're gonna update how this whole map works. Um, but yeah, okay, city council districts. So we could do this also. We have all the same data um, from council districts. Let's see. Uh, that makes more sense, particularly if we are looking at uh, city council discretionary funding. But in the council districts, slightly different geometry here, um, right? sixty seven capital projects. and you know, then the discretionary spending table is probably going to make a little bit more, maybe make a little bit more sense because we'll have, uh, right, you can see 2021 data here. I don't know why we only have 2021 data. We should be getting 2022 data. Okay, so that, I'm um, happy to see that a population fact finder update is in progress. I found that to be a, a really interesting and awesome tool. Really love that tool. Thanks to the folks who put that one together. Okay, so. I think I can keep clicking through this thing. Um, well, let me, I'll just go, I'll just go to one other area. So you saw districts, we saw a capital program. Well, I'll go to organizations. Um, all right, so we got all the government agencies here. Administration for Children's Services is always a, a good one, always a reliably interesting one. Um, so this is where we've combined, let's see how many data sets. 26 data set, uh, 43,000 records. Um, here you get the notices that are in, that are available related to this agency based on, uh, from the city record. Um, what happens if I click here? All right, goes to the city record. Um, we've also got the city record content about their hearings um, related to them. Like the if it's an event, it goes here. If it's a news item, like an intent to award, it goes here. Uh, we've got a few roll-ups here. This year has really been all about updating the capital project stuff. Um, maybe we'll come back to agencies later. 
but here are all the notices from uh, from the city record online. You've got other stuff here, including data tracker. So this stuff, up uh, error. No, not an error. Just says it's an error. Um, so this is kind of where we get into the the capital project work is, and I'm going to stop talking soon. Um, capital project work is kind of a component that we have that we built out almost as an independent app. The rest of the stuff is extremely easy to add. So we can we can really easily add records to agencies. So like, then this is a good example, the uh, record and data table. This is just coming from New York City Open Data Release Tracker. And so you can just see all of the, the status of all of the um, their open data sets. Let's see, does this sort work? Okay. Well, it works, but it gives me this error. So yeah, I got to constantly, I, I love more users. So people are going through here and logging errors like this, but you can see, okay, you know, here's, what does it click to? Uh, okay, yeah, so this, so you can see clicks to the data set. I think that's cool. I think that's useful. Um, you know, anything in here, you know, now that we've normalized it, um, anything here, you know, once we've normalized it, you know, becomes fair game to kind of mesh together into this, this application. Um, right, so we got, Data tracker, data assets, required reports from uh, Doris, publications from Doris. We've got um, all this financing stuff, which I have not dug deeply into, but I think is a fun one. Maybe, maybe a next step. Um, the coolest one, one of the coolest ones, I think, uh, is these the, the stat, the stuff related to people. Um, so we can actually, because the city publishes a civil list, we can see all of the the, the people who work at this agency, basically. Um, their salary rate, which is some level of accurate. Um, and we can go into staffing and we can see things like positions, headcount, demographics, because all this stuff is released in data and it has an agency. So anything that's released in open data that has an agency attached to it, we can normalize and then see information around. So we can see here the 57,000 people that work at, uh, in the administration of children's services. This is public data, freely available. Um, and so we can go in on a title code related to, the, to these folks. And now this is a whole other section, which I really wish I had a presentation about previously because I find this stuff fascinating, which is um, the, 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 the title code. So like everybody who works in the city, almost everybody, has a civil service title and then this is a, happens to be a good one because it pulls up in an automated way we can pull up the description of the person's general duties and responsibilities and assignment levels not this is not true for all of the all of the data sets in there uh, it would be if the data were better organized so we can see the job description and we can see how many people are child protective specialists within um or, or just not even within that agency, uh, amongst all agencies. Um, and so we've got, and you can also see, right, how many scheduled positions are there? What are the salary ranges um, for that? Um, and then how many employees are there? You know, there's been a lot of talk recently, uh, good articles about how the city isn't, uh, there aren't enough, um, you know, th th there's 20% uh, vacancy rates. There's a lot of vacancy rates. You know, I, I, we could 100% to make visualizations around vacancy rates based off of open data, you know, very easily because we have all of this normalized data. And so we're just a chart away. So you want to see aggregate salary, you know, which you can see that we've got, we're paying, you know, in 2021, you know, $147 million a year to sit to child protective specialists with this title code. And we've got almost over 2000 of them, who would have thought? Um, and then positions by agency, it's all administration uh, for children's services. Um, I, th I mean, these numbers are crazy, but you, I mean, maybe they're not that crazy. Um, or maybe are somewhere in the data pipeline, there's something wrong and we need, we need to look more into it, which is something, right, I would love to do. Um, so we've got, so just going through, we get back to uh, agencies. We got all this agency data, um, certainly, interesting stuff. I even at some point played with an interactive organizational chart uh, where you could like see who reports to who, although these organizational charts that the city publishes are not necessarily 100% accurate. But, um, you know, another way to uh, to move through uh, the space. Um, 
Yeah, and so I'll, now I think is a good time for me to start answering questions such as, are you crazy? <laughs> How do you imagine government and public using this? I honestly, I, 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 I would love to tell you that I have good ideas for how the public should use it. I don't. All I know, I mean, I've, I've got ideas. I actually have a lot of ideas. I'd love to work with CUNY people. I'd love to work with students who want to like explore like what's going on with the city, um, do open data stuff related to it. Uh, I think that would be fun. Um, and I also think that they could do things a little bit differently. Um, I'd love for journalists to use this more. Um, I found that journalists are less inclined to use this than I would imagine, but I also don't do a lot of these presentations. I don't do a lot of trainings uh, on the tool. And so, you know, I'm not surprised. I'm really, I'm more of a, I prefer to build than to uh, kind of think politic my way into users, which I think is often uh, what's necessary. Um, well, so the data updates we have, so someone's asking about like source data. I mean, I think that, um, I think that, you know, we, we have an automated, any time a data set is automated in the open data port, like all this is based off of New York City open data that's published. None of this is like our own original content. Um, and so, you know, we are at the mercy of what the city publishes and when they publish it. Um, and that's just the way it is. Uh, I don't want us to, you know, yeah, so that, that I think should answer that question. Um, does the data, historical snapshots of data, yeah, so historical snapshots of data is a great question. It's definitely something that we have begun to do um, and we're particularly interested in doing as the administration shifted and you don't really know what's gonna happen. So we will definitely have, I think we're gonna have monthly historical snapshots of all of the normalized data sets, uh, you know, and we're gonna keep them around for maybe six months or maybe we keep one a year. I don't know, I'm definitely interested in that. Um, how do you keep track of agency changes? This is actually a, is a great question, um, and it's something that I have 100% dealt with. I could get into the Airtable that we use to manage uh, that, but long story short, the way the transformer works is every time it sees an agency name that it's never seen before, it sends me an alert, sends an alert um, that says, you know, who, who do we match this with? So we're actually, we probably have the best agency change data in, around because we're searching 30 data sets that get updated regularly. And if a name in one of those of the agencies is new or is different than what we've had, then you know, we get an alert about it. Um, and I've done some diffs when when Adams and when Adams came, you know, when they kind of changed the organizational chart. I did a diff on agency names and stuff. Uh, and there was and and who they report to, which was uh, which we did, which I spent an uh, evening uh, coding. Uh, or you know, uh, documenting the difference between one PDF organizational chart and another. Um, you know, and there was a lot of interesting information there, a lot of internal politics. And I think that actually goes to like, who would I like to see using this? Like, I'd love journalists to use this stuff. What I found is that journalists don't, because they haven't seen tools like this before, they don't know what the possibilities are. Um, and so they don't use it. And I would have to do a lot of outreach, which, you know, I mean, I'm, this is, this is a, a hobby, uh, a volunteer hobby I do. Um, I'd have to do a lot of outreach, which is a lot harder for me to do than kind of building data specifications, um, building data and software specifications to get this done. So I'm 100% would love for anyone who wants to help me connect people who could use this tool to other people, would love it, would love to connect to students who might do investigations based on it or journalists want to do investigations based on it or anyone wants to work with me to kind of do outreach or, or anyone who has ideas or you know has questions that they think the data sets can answer you know I do in my professional world uh, work on products that lots of people use uh, and that are you know relatively complicated and so I, I, I know and love the value of users who are opinionated who can tell me what they want um, I don't have enough of them for this project, and I would love to work with them. So please reach out to me if you're interested in any of this stuff. Um, I will, my email address is in the chat, but it's Devin at Serapis. I think I have a slide somewhere with it. Um, and do I have a slide somewhere with it? Yeah. Okay. Back to the static picture. Um, yeah. And so that is, I think think the conclusion of this 
session unless you guys want to keep hanging out with me because I'd hang out. Now I'm all, now I'm all excited. Um, so I will, I will hang out with people who want to talk more about this, but I don't even know if that's allowed. Um, but I'd also don't want to keep you past three o'clock. So I don't know how you guys do an outro here, but that's my, that's my best. Uh, that's my best outro. So thanks so much. Really a pleasure as always to come out and talk about this stuff. And I hope folks reach out, particularly interested in working with anybody in the city. Uh, I'd love to help the city. I'm, I'm a passionate resident. And if anybody in the city wants to do anything with this stuff, it would be my favorite user. My favorite user would be people in the city trying to do reform stuff. I'm here for it. I'm here to help. So thank you very much. And it's three o'clock.